It's KB Lake vs Sky Lake. Which one's better, or at least the better deal, is an upgrade worth it or just in general, are there any IPC improvements? With that said, hello everybody, you've made it to this quick comparison video of mine. Today we'll be comparing the new Intel i7 7700K KB Lake with the previous gen i7 6700K Skylake CPU. As you may have heard or read online, there are a bit of mixed feelings regarding KB Lake and its actual improvements. So without further ado, let's jump into it. First off, why not compare these two processors spec-wise real quick. Both the 7700K and 6700K feature 4 cores with hyper-threading resulting in 8 threads. The KB Lake variant comes with a base clock of 4.2GHz, Skylake at 4.0GHz, turbo clock 4.5 versus 4.2GHz. Both CPUs still share the same 91W TDP, 14 nanometer process with slight improvements on the KB Lake side, 4 times 200 56 kilobyte L2 cache and 8 megabytes of L3 cache. Both models support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM at max, but the 7700K supports dual channel DDR4 2400 memory natively now, whereas the 6700K only supports DDR4 2133 natively. Intel HD graphics 630 on the Kaby Lake. 530 on the Skylake side. Unfortunately, just a rebrand as I found out. The 7700K is designed to go with the Z270 chipset, the 6700K with the Z170. However, you could install a Kaby Lake CPU into a Z170 motherboard as long as you update the BIOS. But beware, I did hear people having some problems by doing so, even though by now those issues may have been resolved. And of course you could also install a Skylick processor into a Z270 board without any bias update obviously. The same LGA1151 socket comes into play after all. Now that's it for the specs, but how do things look performance wise? Since I'm also testing IPC clock per clock performance improvements, I ran a separate test with the 7700K clocked at the same frequency as the 6700K to see whether or not we get any IPC improvements. Here are the benchmarks, enjoy! Alright, the new i7-7700K Kaby Lake doesn't quite seem to live up to the hype it seems. I mean, it's certainly not bad, quite the opposite actually. A killer chip with amazing performance to offer, but same can be said about its predecessor the 6700K Skylake variant. Even now in 2017, since there's close to no IPC performance improvement at all. The 7700K pretty much is a refined 6700K release, simply a refresh so to speak, with a more matured manufacturing 
manufacturing process, allowing it to be clocked much higher while not heating up and consuming as much power as Skylake would at those clock speeds. In synthetic benchmarks and in productivity aspects such as video and image editing, the boost in clock speed does in fact seem to help a fair bit, making the 7700K a really fast chip right out of the box. Gaming, however, that's where Cable Lake doesn't seem to bring anything new to the table though. I got pretty much identical results or sometimes even worse frame rates than with Skylake, which however probably is just a matter of optimization. But the point is, people that currently already own a Skylake CPU such as the 6700K have absolutely no reason to upgrade to Cable Lake. If you really want that little extra performance, go ahead and overclock your CPU. Another thing worth noting is that the 7700K is quite the hot running chip. I've been using a decent all-in-one liquid cooler and still had to live with pretty high temperatures despite the processor being at stock clock. That one is rather high already, so it makes sense. So like I've said in my main full review of the 7700K, it's not so much about the CPU this time, it's about the whole platform. The Z270 chipset and the new motherboards bring some impressive new features to the table. Obtain memory support for instance. However, will it take off? I don't know. More USB 3.0 Gen 2, more M.2 and even U.2. These are things not all that many really need though. I mean it's nice to have, but the majority will still be using standard 86 gigabit per second SSDs and whatnot. Something motherboard manufacturers implemented with this generation is RGB lighting on many boards. They try to impress us consumers with aesthetics and lighting more than ever before. But does this really convince us? Sure, many think so. So it's not a bad thing. If consumers want it, why not give it to them, seems logically. To sum it up, go for the 7700K if you're building a completely new PC. But as an upgrade from the 6700K, no, that's not the best idea, save the money. So yeah, this I guess wraps this comparison video up then. I hope you found it helpful just in case you were doing some research on that subject. And if not, maybe you found it entertaining, I hope so. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.